things get smaller and smaller all the time. So the, the next thing we need to talk about is, is fluid resistance. Now, drag resistance is if you've got a solid object and fluid is moving around it. By the way, a fluid is a liquid or a gas, so it can be air, water, oil. And so you've got drag resistance if you've got an object moving through a fluid. Now, if you've got a pipe, or this one up here, both of these, when we talk about fluid resistance, when we talk about water moving through a pipe or a duct, it's just more convenient. What drives the fluid resistance? Well, pressure difference, right? Higher pressure at one end drives flow towards a lower pressure. And what are you moving? Volume flow rate. And drag resistance and fluid resistance and many of the other resistance, they're a force or a force-like quantity divided by some kind of rate. And the force or force-like quantity that drives the fluid flow rate is the pressure difference. And the volume flow rate is the rate at which it's moving. All right? Now, a big duct tends to have, well, it will have lower fluid resistance than a narrow duct up here. Now, there are competing effects. You know, the big duct, it's got more room for turbulence to develop, so you expect the fluid resistance would increase, right? You add more pressure, you get more turbulence. But the deal is, there's less friction along the walls. If I'm moving through, if I'm a piece of fluid and I'm moving through a duct, then some of the fluid is scraping along the walls, and that's what slows it down. Slows it down. If I increase the diameter, then, you know, I'm touching this perimeter, but as I increase that, if you double the diameter, you quadruple the area, because it goes up as the diameter squared. So what happens is, I've got a smaller proportion of the flow touching the walls. As I increase the diameter, the area goes up much more. So like I said, a smaller proportion of the flow as you increase the diameter is touching the walls, and the fluid resistance goes down. If I have a longer tube, the fluid resistance will go up. Now, it's kind of tricky. It's not proportional the way that fluid resistance goes down as the diameter increases. But for long tubes, as you increase the length, it is pretty proportional. If I double the length, I'm going to about double the fluid resistance because there's twice as much surface area to scrape by on, and that causes resistance. So fluid resistance. A view would have been nice. It's given by R for resistance and an F for fluid. Fluid resistance, this is for gas or liquid, is equal to the pressure difference that drives it divided by the rate, which is the volume flow rate. And the units are like, well, let's see, pressure is like PSI. Volume flow rate is like, could be like gallons per minute. Or it could be like uh, Pascals, which is a Newton per meter squared, per um, uh, liter per hour or meters cubed per second, uh, let me go to that, pascals over meters cubed per second, any kind of pressure measurement, PSF, divided by any kind of volume flow rate measurement, any kind of units. All right, and the way this works, it's a lot like drag resistance. If I plot pressure difference, versus volume flow rate. Say I turn up the t open up the tap, and I open it up a little bit, so just do a little bit of pressure difference. And that's going to, as I open up the tap, the volume flow rate is going to go up too, right? So as I increase the pressure difference by opening up the tap, the volume flow rate goes up. But then at some point, this happens. Just like with drag resistance. I get this upward curving slope. So right down here, I'm increasing the pressure, the volume flow rate's going up, but the ratio of the rise, pressure difference, to the run volume flow rate, that's the slope. So delta P over volume flow rate, that's the slope, and that's the fluid resistance. Here I'm increasing, but the slope is constant, so the fluid resistance 
I'm increasing volume flow rate with pressure. But the slope is constant. And that's because I've got laminar flow. You know, if you turn the faucet on slow enough, you can see the water coming down. It's pretty clear. It's not all turbulent. So I'm laminar. So there's laminar flow. Now at some point, as I increase the pressure more, now everything's smashing into each other harder and harder, and I'm generating more and more turbulence. And so now I increase the pressure, I'm increasing the volume flow rate, but I'm also increasing the turbulence. So the volume flow rate doesn't go up as much. So a small increase in volume flow rate now is due to a much larger increase in pressure. Because I got leaks I'm in energy, I'm, I'm throwing in turbulence. So right here, the fluid resistance increases and that means I've got turbulent flow. All right. So just like we did with drag resistance we can use this for an example. Perfect. So let's say I've got flow through a pipe and I apply, apply a pressure difference of um, uh, 40 psi and I get a volume flow rate of 20 gallons per minute. And I want to know what's the fluid resistance. Let's call that A. Well, the fluid resistance is just the ratio of the pressure difference to the volume flow rate, which is 40 psi over 20 gallons per minute, which is 2 psi pounds per square inch per gallon per minute. All right, so I've calculated the fluid resistance. Now let's try B. Well, let's say that uh, I increase the pressure difference to 80 psi. And I get, let's see, a volume flow rate of 36 gallons per minute. I want to know, is the flow laminar or turbulent? Well, let's check out, let's calculate the new fluid resistance. If it's the same as the old, that means that means I'm still on the same straight line, I'm still laminar. If it's bigger than the old, that means I'm somewhere up here. It doesn't tell me if the old one was constant, was laminar or not, but it does tell me that the new one, if it increased, it must be turbulent. It won't go down. There are unusual circumstances where you can relaminarize flow, but we won't get into it. We'll just assume that the more energy you get to throw in, the more turbulent it gets. So let's find out if this changes. The fluid resistance, the new fluid resistance, is the new pressure difference over the new volume flow rate, which is 80 psi over 30. Oh, can I make that 32? Thank you very much. I'm going to make that 32 gallons per minute, just to make it easier on myself. And that's going to give me. 2.5 psi. Sorry, just remember I changed that to 32, so make sure you change that on your notes instead of 36. Two and a half psi per gallon per minute. I wanted it to be a little bit different too. So look what happened. I used to have two psi per gallon per minute. That was my old fluid resistance. My new one is two and a half. It's bigger. I must be somewhere on here. I must be turbulent. They're not proportional anymore. So, RF2 
that's, that's hard to read. Let me do it like this. RF2, the new fluid resistance, is greater than the old fluid resistance, which means turbulent flow. There's another way to determine, determine whether you're laminar flow or turbulent flow, and that's with the Reynolds number. And that's what we'll talk about next.